What's up guys, Sleepy Modder here back with a quick little video and the new RTX series video cards are out from NVIDIA. And this time around, the Titan class might actually be dead. So, okay then, let's rewind a little bit and actually figure out why this may be. Now, four days ago, NVIDIA has just launched their big new 20 series RTX video cards with the 2070, 2080 and 2080 Ti. Well, by the time this video hits YouTube, probably a little bit more than four days. But the point being, they are very new to the market and you can't exactly get one yet. You can do pre-order, which you should never pre-order anything at all. No matter how good it may be, you should just never pre-order anything. Now these cards are definitely going to be kicking a lot in terms of performance and also to the price point, but when I was looking a little bit closer and doing some research into these cards, I noticed something interesting. The Titan might not be available at all. Now, on stage these guys were basically all about that ray tracing, and basically that's sort of uh, to be expected with ray tracing in the name, RTX, it's definitely going to be expected that a lot of their time was focused on the ray tracing side. However, by now we've probably all seen that post on Reddit where someone was claiming to be only getting 30 FPS with the ray tracing enabled on these new video cards, and let's face it, 30 FPS in 1080p on a brand new video card seems to be a bit of a problem. And with the internet being the internet only concerned about the FPS, things did get a little bit out of hand. So let's talk about the new cards, why Titan might be dead, and what my thoughts are. As a lot of people are asking me, what do I think of the new series of video cards? So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing that I have to say is, uh, yeah, we may not be seeing a new Titan cast. Now, every other time we've gotten new video cards, we've had the 80 series come out, the 70 series come out, then a little bit down the line, we've had the Titan come out, and then a couple weeks to a month, or maybe a little bit more than that, uh, we've had the TI version of the 80 come out, which is essentially a Titan, but at a lower price point, with the slightly cut down core, and overall it's basically a Titan for a little bit less money. We've seen this with the 10 series, with the 900 series, well we didn't have an 800, so the 700 series, 600 and so on and so forth, when we had Titans around. And, well... We've got all of the cards out now, which is kind of interesting to see. And with the pricing and specifications taking a look here, well, it's actually seeming that we might not see one from both departments. In fact, when it came to actual pricing, I was just about right in my last video. So that means the 1180 would be costing around $1,600 if it was to be around that $699 price tag, or even up to $1,800 or $1,900 for the 1180. And if the TI came out, we could be seeing over $2,000 Australian dollars for this video card. So in that price and spec department, it kind of rules out any ability to slot in a Titan class of card, even though NVIDIA is the king of slotting in little cards here and there where they really shouldn't go it does make it very hard to slot one in. Because the GTX 1080 Ti is already coming in at $1,899, can't even say that number right, $1,899, to go any higher would then start to stamp on the feet of the Quadro type video cards, which NVIDIA really won't want to do. And it's kind of interesting to see. So if we kind of put those pricing and specs together, we might end up with no Titan cards here, and the new 2080 might be where the 1080 Ti was, and the new 2070 might be where the 1080 was, so we might have just adjusted down where the 28, uh, 2080 Ti is now the Titan, 2080 is now where the 1080 was, and then it goes down from there. Now, obviously, no, we haven't got any information about a Titan class of video card, but it kind of starts to make sense. If they were going to charge anything more than 1800, we'd be looking at anywhere from 2500 to 3000 dollars, which again gets up in that quadro market. But actually, these new cards, what do I think of them? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking there's no Titan but what do I actually think of these cards? Well, from a gaming perspective, well, I don't really know too much, but definitely from a creator standpoint, I am absolutely stoked for this. For me, I love to jump into something like After Effects and play around with ray tracing plugins, and also too, I love jumping into SketchUp and doing 3D renders with all my ray tracing plugins, which SketchUp really shouldn't be used with 3D plugins, but my point being, it definitely does work, and a lot of time whenever I'm playing around with this kind of stuff on the weekend, or whenever I do get a few moments, it will usually take me two to three days to render, well, whatever I've created on my 1080 Ti 6950X system. 
and if I had something like the real-time abilities, supposedly if this actually gets supported by all the software I use, my two to three days could be condensed to just one hour if it was a real-time kind of ray tracing and the software scaled and supported these video cards. Now, obviously, just because they come out doesn't mean my workflow is going to go from two to three days to just one hour. That's definitely not the case. Obviously, software needs to be optimized, uh, but definitely something like this definitely gets me excited on the creator standpoint because I can do all my ray tracing simulations without the need to wait around for hours and hours and hours and days to get things done. But Many people out there will be buying this video card simply for the fact of playing video games and I'm thinking they may be a little bit disappointed. And what I mean by that is in the ray tracing side. Again, a lot of the time in videos spent up on stage talking about ray tracing, how good it was, how awesome it's going to be for gaming and all those types of things. But ray tracing doesn't exactly happen very, very fast. Fast. So, even though my silly little After Effects things takes two days to render a whole thing, a feature film might take two days to render a single frame, and then gamers want to render their games in just a fraction of a second to get 60, 20, 120, all those different uh, FPSs, it doesn't really make sense that they're going to be able to do this in the ray tracing mode. Now, don't get me wrong, you can just turn off ray tracing and then use it as a normal video card in the old uh, rasterization way, which is totally able to do, and I'm sure you're going to see anywhere from a 20 to 25% increase. However, people thinking that they can go ahead and get lifelike renditions of whatever they may be playing might find themselves a little bit disappointed in what may be coming down the line. I think Nvidia may have shot themselves a little bit in the foot with all the demos that they've been showing off, which look absolutely fantastic, but then expecting that kind of quality to be happening in real time in plus 60 FPS may not necessarily be the world's most realistic situation. And I guess they shot themselves in the foot even further by not even actually talking about standard rasterization performance where they just didn't show any graphs. They showed a whole bunch of graphs regarding their new RTX and R ray tracing technology and all that kind of stuff, but kind of left out your traditional gaming FPS. And yet people are still buying this to go ahead and play video games. And whilst there are no reviews up at the time of recording and there won't be for a little bit more time as there's still an embargo going and all that kind of stuff, but the idea of only getting 30 FPS is most likely to be kind of a little bit of a, um, not exactly true thing because that 30 FPS was most likely done on uh, not really fully fledged drivers, on a not really fully fledged patch to the game, and also to on a non release video card. We're most likely going to be seeing more towards the 50 to 60 FPS when it actually comes to a fully fledged consumer version that has been optimized. Don't get me wrong, I'm just as annoyed as you guys are about the fact that we've got this brand new almost $2,000 video card and it can't even do more than 30 FPS in the mode that it was selected for. But what we do need to remember is there's going to be a lot of optimizations coming down the line. So whilst it may not perform so great at launch, we may need to give it a little bit more time. And in its standard performance mode, in the rasterization kind of thing, we'll be again seeing more that 25 kind of percent performance jump over last generation. Then finally, we did want to go ahead and touch back on pricing and oh snap, this thing is very, very expensive. Again, as we did mention, the new top end is most likely going to be the Titan replacement. So for 1899 Australian dollars, it kind of makes sense that the uh, Titan was already a very expensive card and the non-TI version, which is where the 1080 was, is looking more towards the tune of 1199 and then the 70 class for $8.99, which I guess kind of further hammers home the fact that we may not be seeing a fully fledged Titan card. And if we look back at the existing pricing of the 10 series, I was also too kind of right with my last uh, predictions in the last video where I said, sure, the new uh, generation will be announced, but we won't see the world's biggest price card. And we've kind of seen that with the 10 series really only receiving anywhere from a $50 to $100 price card here in Australia. Even though, yes, the new 20 series isn't on sale, yet, it still has started to receive some price cuts, but they will be wanting to sell all their existing inventory before we really start to see some bigger price cuts. With some 1080 Ti still well over $1,200 with even a discount, they're still definitely not the cheapest thing. And this also again plays into the fact that, well, they've got a lot of cards just sitting around and they do need to get rid of their last generation. So I guess that sort of then brings us to the conclusion of this quick little video. I guess my conclusion to this is, sure, new generation, definitely performance will be up, but not in the way that I think a lot of people will be hoping for. A lot of us saw those demos of that cool animations and stuff that were supposedly done in real time on these cards, but we're not most likely gonna be seeing anything like this for another 
another one, maybe even two generations. As this is a brand new technology and anything that is brand new does need a lot of time to mature before it is ready for prime time. And that's something we're just going to have to wait around and see as an update. That 30 FPS has been floating around the internet, again has most likely been done on unreleased drivers, on an unreleased patched, on unreleased hardware and all of it being unoptimized. I'm expecting more to the tune of maybe 50 to 60 FPS or even higher if they do some more tweaking between now and when it finally drops. Um, in terms of actual numbers there, we are still looking at preliminary numbers. And I guess that then also too goes back to the fact that you really shouldn't be pre-ordering these kind of cards. Even though we've not seen the Titan yet, I do think that the Titan may actually be dead because again, looking at the price point, looking at the specifications and looking at how Nvidia has rolled out this generation with the full-fledged TI next to the non-TI version, again we may not necessarily be seeing that, but hey, NVIDIA might come out and release one anyway, even though maybe stepping on the quadro toes. But guys, let me know down in that comment section, what do you think of the new generation? Personally, I'm excited more for the content creation and productivity side, but let me know if you are a gamer what you think of these new cards. And I guess as a bit of a side note, also to let me know what you think will happen with the Titan line. Do you think we're going to get a Titan line coming in like two and a half, three thousand dollars or do you think it's just going to be dead and we're going to be seeing the TI as your new top spec system? So do let me know down below. Guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.